Hey guys, it's me. We want to welcome, uh, I saw Taylor, but I thought it was, was it Jensen? It's my maiden name is Jensen. So it's Ricker now. Okay. Taylor yeah. Richter with us today. Taylor is a five star diamond in her first CBC. She's a one star in her second CBC. She is premier or she made premier last year. So I think that's called a premier 2018 coach. Uh, she's a success club legend. Um, last year, well, she's been coaching for two and a half years, and she quit, or I should say, retired from her corporate job uh, in December after two years of coaching. So did I hit everything? I think so. Uh, yeah. So we're so happy to have Taylor on today. She's going to share with us about being consistent and a little bit of Instagram, if I'm correct. Yes, exactly. I remember it right. All right. So I will turn it over to you, Taylor, and... Welcome to our team call. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk about this. Um, Instagram and recruiting is like my jam, so something I love talking about. Um, and it actually wasn't always my strong suit. So there's a lot of things I had to learn and kind of teach myself how to do this. So if you're in the same place, um, I know that you guys can build this and you guys can really change your business using Instagram, especially um, right now in this time. There's so many people on Instagram. And that can really, really, really change your business. Um, so as she said, I've been coaching for about almost two and a half years now. Um, I retired from my corporate job in December. Um, and it's been like crazy ever since. So a lot of people tell me, they're like, well, I don't have a lot of time to do this. And I don't have a lot of, like, I don't know how you recruit that many people. And how do you balance it all? And I just want you guys to know just a little backstory. Like, I have been so busy throughout this entire business. Um, just because I'm full-time now doesn't mean, like, I wasn't, you know, crazy the whole entire time. Um, the first two years of my business, I was working about 50 to 60 hours a week in corporate America. I also got engaged, so I was planning a wedding. I was moving into a new house. I was planning my honeymoon. Then we got married, and then we were pregnant in December. And now, really, even since being home, we got a new puppy, and I've been pregnant. So I think I've been even crazier than when I was working. So I've never had it like oh, this is so easy all this time. Um, it has been crazy. So just goes to show that no matter what your schedule is, you guys can do this. Um, so I kind of broke it up into about six pieces of how you guys can implement this as well in your business. So I'm mainly going to talk about Instagram. I do run a Facebook like page as well, but I will be honest and say that Instagram is where probably 95% of my people come from. I mean, might get a couple on Facebook, but honestly, I think those people are coming from Instagram anyway to find my Facebook page. Um, so that's really, really, really where I focus a ton of my time on. Um, so number one on Instagram, you have to find your brand and be professional. So when someone comes across your Instagram page, they have about two seconds to judge you and they're either going to follow you or they're not. And that is your platform. That's like their newspaper for them to see. Like, what do you have on those first 12 photos? Um, are they consistent? Do they like, fit one filter? Are they bright? Do they catch your eye? Do they tell a story? Um, do they tell a story of who you are and your brand? So I always tell my coaches to come up with five things and really break down their brand into five different things. So what that is to them and health and fitness is only one of them. So they have to make sure that they're talking about other things in health and fitness, so that they're relatable to other people. Um, because if you're only talking about your workouts and your healthy food for someone who's not living that life, it can be very hard for them to relate to you. So what else do you have? So pieces of my brand now is mom to be like, I'm connecting with a bunch of first time moms now or other pregnant women for the first time. Um, puppy mom. That's a lot to talk about too. It's a pain in the butt. Um, so talk about those things going on in your life. Um, newlywed. I talk about being married and being a newlywed and starting this new life. And I'm a total homebody. So I will talk about being home and loving working from home and just being home all the time because that is just what I love um, and really what draw me to this business in the first place. So figure out what your brand is and break those down into about five things and make sure that you're posting about those consistently every single week. So those first 12 photos, you can relate to that person. I mean, that person you're talking to in that avatar in that snapshot. Um, so that'd be the first thing I would do, break those down, figure out who you are, figure out who that person is that you want and who would you want on your team? Who do you be best friends with? Who relates to you? Um, cause I know it's great to have, you know, the most successful points and the most recruits and all of that, but it's not as fun to work with people that you don't mesh with that you don't get along with. It's a lot more fun. Um, when you know, you can hang out and drink wine with and go to the events and like love who your team is. Um, so make sure that you're kind of portraying that as well. 
And then along with that as your filters on Instagram. It's very important to have a bright and catchy and eye-catching photo on Instagram. Um, Facebook, I always say, like, you can post, like, anything and everything on there, really. It could go over well. Um, Instagram, not the case. People are going to judge you really fast on Instagram. Um, so figure out what your filter is and use that filter all the time. Your filter is also part of your brand. So I'm using the same filter on every single photo. I'm adjusting with the same color so that, again, my feed is just meshing well together um, and making sure that those all go well together. And then all of these things, just make sure that you show them consistently and you're consistently showing up. You're consistently being that same person and being that brand and staying true to your brand. Um, Cause if I went and posted something about like cats, everyone would be like, who is this girl? That's not why I follow her. Um, so make sure that you are sticking to that and that's what you're posting and that's what you're being true to. So that is the first thing, finding your brand and being consistent with it. And then the second thing is being a constant sneak peek. Um, so a lot of this I'm going to relate towards recruiting. Yes, I hit success club to get clients on there as well. But I really, 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 um, my strong suit is recruiting. I love recruiting new coaches. I love mentoring new coaches. Um, so in order to do so, really what changed my business for me, it was about like a year and a half ago, um, I went to my coach, Jamie Innes, and I was like, I cannot recruit business builders. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, I hit my di I hit diamond off of discount coaches. Um, I had my mom and my husband under me. I made them emerald, and I totally just built my own diamond. I didn't really wait for anybody. Um, and I had a really hard time finding those people who wanted to work at least past the first month of excitement, and then they were just, like, gone. I was like, what am I doing wrong? And she told me, she's like, you need to find your people. You're not meshing with those people, and they're not people who really want it. So I had to revamp my social media, and that's where I started because that is everything. Um, so I started talking about coaching more and I was a, co a constant sneak peek of coaching. Um, so this doesn't mean that you have to have like, you know, one call to action post a week that's like awesome and well-crafted and perfect and like, hey, okay, join my sneak peek. Like that's not what I mean. It's like a constant little tidbits to kind of get people interested. So every day I talk about something that I'm doing with coaching. It's not, you know, always an invite, but it's like, you know, today I'm doing what I love on a Monday. I post about that. That already intrigues people. Like, oh, I hate Monday. Like, what is she doing? Um, or she's working from home or being able to work from a coffee shop and being able to pay bills. And one thing I want to talk about there is like, make sure that you're acting like the coach you want to be, not the coach that you are now. So just because you might be an Emerald coach and you're not making that much money does not mean you can't talk about the opportunity because there's so many people out there who maybe they just want to pay for their groceries every week or once a month, or they want to, you know, pay for those little things. And that little amount of money is going to be huge for them. It's going to make a lot of difference for them in their life. Um, so make sure that, you know, you're not holding off on talking about those things because you're waiting till you get there. Um, cause that's not going to get you there. Um, so don't hold back on, you know, posting about coaching, about hosting your own sneak peeks because you don't think you're going to have people in there. Act like the coach you are. The people not on your social media don't know. They don't know how many people you have in your team or how, you know, any of that. So act like that person. And then the other way I am constantly posting about coaching is in my Instagram stories. Everyone should be using Instagram stories now um, consistently every single day. That's another thing you want to make sure is consistent because as people start watching your stories, they're going to show up more in their feed. So make sure that you always have a story for them to watch. Like I know when I go into Instagram, I have like the top 10 people that like I'm always going through. I mean, they're always consistent. That's why they show up on mine because they have a story every day. Um, so make sure that if I went to your Instagram I would know what you're doing. I would know what your day was like and what workout you did and little things like that. So you can show everything on Instagram stories. This is where like your pretty perfect feed can become like more you and you can have your own personality in here. Um, so I will, whenever I'm like running something or talking about coaching, I'll just do a couple little um, stories and talk about it and get excited and then move on. Like leave them hanging a little bit and they don't always need a full invite. They kind of want to be like, oh, what's she doing? And just kind of tiptoe them along um, and same thing in your posts. And then I do, um, I still do call to action posts. I'm not saying I don't, I'm not saying don't do those. Just make sure you're doing those little things in between so that, you know, it's like that jab, jab, right hook book. I don't know if you guys have read it, um, but make sure you're having those little jabs in there so that when you go in for that right hook, people are like, oh yeah, I want to do that. And then number three is invite daily. And this doesn't mean just like constantly cold market messaging people, constantly inviting people that way, um, but make sure that you're being interactive and then you're inviting people that way. Um, I have a lot of coaches and I think it's a 
common thing for coaches. They hate inviting. They don't want to have those conversations. They can rock out on social media. They can get awesome results. They don't want to talk to people and they don't want to invite people. And if you're being engaging on Instagram and you're creating that um, engaging content, it's not going to be as hard to invite people because you're going to have people interacting with your posts. You're going to have people interacting with your stories and they're going to be easier conversations to reach out to. Um, so make sure that on your post, you're asking engaging questions. You're making it interactive. Um, for me right now, having a new baby coming and I'm a first time mom, there's so many questions I can ask and people love to give their opinion, right? So like, even if you already know the answer, like ask people like what stroller do you use or little things like that and get people talking. And then those are easy conversations, and easy people to reach out to from there. Um, same thing with Instagram stories. I'm always doing polls on there. Um, utilize the poll function because that gives you so many more people to reach out to. Um, if you are using Instagram stories, you can see on there how many people are viewing your um, stories and how many people are actually liking your posts. You probably have a crap ton more people like watching your stories um, than liking your posts because that's just engagement nowadays and like attention span. People aren't really going to the feed anymore. Um, they're watching stories. So make sure that along with that, you're doing polls and you can do like interactive ones. that don't have to be a call to action. Um, ask them like this or that or whatever you're talking about and then reach out to them on that. Like start a conversation. Um, I have a coach who does this all the time. She's so good at Instagram polls because she's really, really trying to build her business fast and she has and she swears by doing little polls all the time, at least every day, asking questions and starting conversations from there. It's just so natural for her. Um, so find something that works for you that's natural for that so that you can keep Keep inviting and it doesn't feel like a chore for you it doesn't feel like it's so 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 hard um, and they're gonna be able to ask more about coaching and you're gonna be able to talk more about that because you're talking about it so much on your stories as well um, and then from there I do also do call to action on Instagram stories so whenever I'm aligning like I have a coaching sneak peek group coming up I run those on Facebook and um, whenever I have one of those coming up if I make that call to action post on Instagram I also ask them in my Instagram stories. I talk a little bit about them. I let them know what they're going to get. Um, you know, I'm going to cover this, this, and this, and this. Have you ever been interested in what I do? And then I do a little poll and I say, yes, I'd love more info or maybe next month. I never say no because I feel like it's like really negative on the Instagram story. People see it and they're like, oh, 50% said no. I'm not going to say no. Um, yeah, so um, make sure you're doing that and then you have all those people to reach out to and I have been filling up my coaching sneak peeks like a hundred times more um, because of the people voting yes on those polls um, they don't want to take the time maybe they're not even seeing your post but also people don't want to like put themselves out there and comment or message you it's just like too much effort but then like post clicking on that poll is a game changer um, so make sure that you're doing that and when you're having these conversations with people, don't be afraid to ask them. Like, don't be afraid to go in for the kill and like tell them they'd be an amazing coach. Ask them if they want to be in the group because you're going to be shocked with people who do say yes. Um, so force yourself to have, you know, those actual invites, like reaching out is so much different than actually inviting. You're going to have like reaching out to like 100 people a day, but if you never actually say the words, like, have you ever thought about what I do or do you want to be in my group? Um, they're not going to know all the time. They don't know that the invite's open. Um, so don't be afraid to ask them. All right. And I kind of covered this one, number four, um, act like the coach you want to be and don't wait to recruit. Um, so this is something that definitely held me back in my business. I wasn't running consistent coaching sneak peeks. I wasn't talking about it consistently because I didn't think I was a good enough coach to talk about that yet. I didn't think that I had enough experience to talk about that yet. And I definitely didn't think that people wanted to be in my coaching sneak peeks yet. Um, as an Emerald coach or a diamond coach off of discount coaches, like I really didn't think people, I had anything to say. And as soon as I changed that and I started to become more confident and not only confident in my posts, but confident in my conversations. I think that people really, really can feel that even though it's on social media and they can like feel your presence and what you're saying. So make sure you're confident about things and don't be afraid to like battle objections. I'm not saying like argue with people, but if they have an objection, they say it's too much money. I used to cower away and be like, okay, that's fine. And now I really question that. I'm like, what do you think is really holding you back? Have you ever thought about saving the money? Um, what part of it do you think isn't worth it? Like, really start questioning them and be more confident in yourself because you're gonna be surprised. Most people are just scared and they're really scared and they wanna talk through it. Um, and most of them blame it on money. So don't be afraid to battle those objections too. I mean, just be confident in the coach you are no matter where you are and really, really talk about that all the time and be consistent with it.
And then number five, um, align your content with your sneak peek opportunities. So um, I do the same thing with bootcamp opportunities, but um, I really, really want to focus this on recruiting on Instagram. So um, for example, just this past week, you could even go to my Instagram and kind of see how I did it. Um, but this past week, I was really focused on recruiting coaches. I already had people into my boot camp. I was really focused on recruiting. Um, so the first like five days before that, I was doing little breadcrumbs into coaching. I was constantly talking about it. I was talking about working at a coffee shop. I talked a little bit about my income. I talked about just different things and being able to be home with the baby and all these little things leading up to it. And then I had that right hook on Wednesday night and got everybody into my sneak peek. We let it this weekend, and then I think at this point in a week, we've had, I had 12 business builders join um, as of yesterday, so that was like Thursday to Sunday, like super, it's like easy to do, but it's not, I get it, like it's, it's a ton of work, but it's a really simplified way to, um, I mean, it's a really simplified way to get those people in the door and get them all in all at once. Um, so I talked about it like crazy. I talked about it in Instagram polls. I got people in there. I was adding everybody into my sneak peek group. Um, and then from there, I, you know, really got them on Facebook. So um, a little bit, of, I always get questions about how I run my sneak peek groups and I change them up all the time. Um, this Thursday was just a happy hour with a few of my coaches. Um, I got them in there on Thursday night and I gave them a deadline. Sunday night, they have to join by Sunday night. I gave them all the information they needed. I answered all their questions. I gave them the weekend to think it over. Um, another thing that's really helped me in those groups, so I talk about everything, like what we do, cover the vital behaviors, a day in the life, part-time versus full-time, if they can be part-time, um, a little bit about free groups and challenge groups, the training opportunity, really a little bit of everything, but all the videos are about five minutes. I had six coaches total talk. Um, and then I've also had Ryan come on, which has been like a huge change for me because so many people say that their husband was a skeptical one. So I've been adding that into my coaching sneak peeks too, and it's really, really helped because he was very skeptical too. Um, so he's just honest about it too. So that's just one other thing I add in those sneak peeks. Um, and then I give them that deadline by Sunday night. And I was reminding them like crazy yesterday. Um, I was shouting people out. I had six coaches join, and I was like, hey, all these coaches join. I'm so excited for them. They started to comment, and then we had six more after that. Um, so it's kind of like the compound effect for from there and people are like oh they did it and then I can do it and then I can do it and just like create that social atmosphere in there and get them to get to know each other get them excited about it and really really pump that group up um, but I wouldn't have got those people in there if I wasn't doing all the things before this on Instagram so all of it matters it's all just as important um, you could have an awesome sneak peek group but you need to make sure you're getting the right people in there as well all right, and then the last thing is just being consistent with all of this. So do all of these things consistently, um, every single one of those, you know, I don't just talk about coaching on the weeks. I have a coaching sneak peek coming up, constantly talk about it all the time. Um, never miss a day on social media. Since the day I started as a coach, I've never missed one day posting ever. And I've had my, even on my wedding, my honeymoon, like we've had deaths in the family, all kinds of things. I never miss a day on social media. It's so important. I think a lot of people overlook that. That is your business. It's like not showing up for work that day. Post on social media every day. Um, even if you just have to, you know, throw up a motivational post or something or whatever little, just post something. Um, make sure you're learning from your mistakes and constantly evolving and growing as a coach is really my last thing there. Um, there are so many things like if I didn't reevaluate my business a year and a half ago and ask my coach what I'm doing wrong and really look at my social media and be like, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Like, it's okay. If you put up a post and like that sucked, you can delete it and take it down. Like make sure that you are honest with yourself and that you're constantly trying to improve. Um, because if I didn't do that, it wouldn't have gotten me to where I am today either. Um, and social media is constantly change, changing. The algorithms constantly change. So it's important that you keep up with it. Um, I have some coaches who still are scared to use Instagram stories or go live on Facebook. And those two things are the most engaging things on both platforms. Um, so even though it's new and you're not comfortable with it, use it, learn it, and kind of keep evolving from there. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Awesome. That was awesome. Awesome. I had um, a question. Do you have time for a question? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we haven't got the ticker yet. Um, no, if you have to go, let me know. Well, another coach did a call for us, and she loves Instagram stories as well and Facebook stories. And she gave us the tip. Um, and I've, I've seen some top coaches, so. And I agree with her. But, you know, some of the, and I won't mention names, but some of the top coaches have like 101 stories. And I get bored and I stopped. And so yeah. she's like, don't do that. 
what is your suggestion on the amount of you know pictures in your story so I think the most important part is that it's engaging so if you are just sitting there talking to the camera the whole time personally for me I'd be exiting out of it I don't really care um there's some ways you can make it a little bit engaging like if you want to show more of your workouts and you also want to talk in the same day and show pictures in the same day so it's going to be a little longer make sure it's engaging like hype type is an app that's great um to kind of put your workouts together and put music to it and really kind of amp it up a little bit so maybe if you want to do that make sure it's like you know something fun for people to look at they have music going and there's words on it if you're talking like I say like three or four like little snippets if that's enough of talking like just to your face um because people will get bored of that um and then just it, really the engaging part is huge but I agree if there's too many I won't watch it and definitely don't do that every single day like if you have a really packed full day where you're talking about a lot of things um that's okay um but make sure that that's not your every day because people aren't going to keep watching those all the time and make sure they're very engaging because that is 100% true I have some people that I follow um that are just talking the whole time I'm not gonna lie I just swipe through all of them so I think the engaging piece is the most important part okay because uh you know some of the top coaches you're like well all right you want to follow them and I'm not picking because you know yeah. they're top, but also they're top. So maybe they don't, it doesn't matter if they do a hundred and one. Right. Exactly. So, Big uh, they already have huge platforms as yeah. well. So they could still you know, even if they had 2000 people watching it, they could have like a hundred thousand mats. That's still a huge miss. From yeah. other. So if you're still building your platform, really, really focus on that engagement. Okay. I like that. And the other thing, I guess you can tell the stories are going to be new for me. I mean, we, Kaylee and I have been adding two hours and building on that because we know how important they are. But um, the other coach also mentioned that just like you did, she sees who watches her stories and she will contact them. Yeah. Is that, I mean, to me, that's, and here I am, you know, I've been in the business, but that's one of those like, Ooh, is that weird? Like, how do you approach those people that have been watching your story? Like I saw you saw my story or what? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think that it also depends like what story it is. If it's something engaging that you can like talk to them about, um, that's, I kind of agree. Cause there's going to be so many people watching your stories. Like it depends how big your platform is, but I think I have like 5,000 people constantly watching my story and it's really hard for me to manage that. So personally, I do not reach out to those people. Um, but I do have new coaches who do, and they have, if they're just building their social media and they're just building their platforms. And I think that's a little bit different because they can manage that number. And what they do is they see who is watching it consistently. So they kind of keep track of that. And if they're constantly seeing the same faces, that's when they reach out. And they're like, hey, I see you've been watching me. Like, how, like whatever, say something from that, that you can like have a question on the Instagram stories. Like, why, how long have you been interested in health and fitness? Or how long have you been following me? Or, you know, what brings you to my page? Something like that. Um, but I agree. Like, you have to make sure that it is those people that are constantly watching and this is just like a random thing. Um, but that's also why I love the poll the poll feature yeah. where you can really get people in that way. You know they voted and you know something to talk to them about specifically from there. Yeah, I loved the poll thing. I was like, okay, that makes sense. I could reach out yeah. to them. Yeah, then, easier yeah. way. And then you know who's watching it, easier way to do it. That was perfect. All right, so those were my questions. I jotted down because I got to start hitting the stories a little bit better. Yeah. So, but You get a lot of people on there. They're fun. Yeah, they, are, they have been fun. I've, and I liked the um, don't put anything negative on your poll. Like, yeah, you have two good choices. Like, are you yeah, in? it's so easy and then people will say no and it's like a huge percentage now no one wants to say yes anymore so yeah. you like more info or something like that it's i made the mistake like on one of my first polls is because i was doing crow and i'm like um would you like to see me do you know practice crow or not and so, so like, no. <laughs> the first vote i got was no and i was like well that hurts i got things a lot yeah you don't even want to deal with that you don't want to see that <laughs> So I learned, as you said, learn yeah. from mistakes. So exactly, exactly. All right, Mackenzie, do you have any questions before I uh, let uh, Taylor go? Um, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, my biggest struggle in consistency is just, I guess, and it's more about my own mindset and attitude and the engagement. Like, I find it's hard for me to be consistent when I'm not getting like the engagement reciprocated and I think I'm being engaging, but maybe I'm not. Um, so, you know, do you have any tips for that other than just push on, push forward, keep going no matter what? 
Yeah, so a little bit of both of that. Like, it took me a long time to get engagement too. Like, my first, like, real year of, like, pushing this, it was hard. Like, it took a lot of time and effort. I mean, like, going out and finding people and trying to be more engaging. And it really did take that, like, higher follower number to kind of, like, get more engaging and get um, more people to my page. Um, but I really, like, looked at the, like, look at the questions you're asking too. Because I also find that if they're too broad, like, people won't interact with me either. Like, it really has to be, like, a simple answer for them. Like, do you like mushrooms? Yes or no? Or like cats or dogs or like this or that more than like, what are you eating for dinner? What are you doing tonight? I find like anything open ended doesn't get as much engagement as all at all. And also ask people's opinions more because people really, really love to like say what they think and give opinions about things. Even if you don't, like you already kind of know the answer or um, if you're at the store and like ask about brands or more something like that, people really do like to give you their opinions for that. Um, but other than that, like it does take like doing it consistently, doing it over time. I try to do like just one a day or so. That's like a question to ask. And then from there, be like really intentional with every comment. Like make sure that you're responding to every single comment, even if it's like you, you don't really know what to say, like post an emoji back or something, because that's going to get it back in the feed and get more engagement to it. Um, Instagram, it's important to like reply right away. So I always like the first 30 minutes after I make a post, like I am on it all the time and making sure that um, I am responding really fast to the posts. Facebook, I do it like as time goes, you know, I could even do it the next day. So it pops back up in the feed later. Um, but Instagram, I make sure I'm really on top of it. But it does take practice and like really looking at the post. Like if you do have a post that does awesome, look back and be like, okay, how can I ask another question like that? Or talk about that more people like that. So it does take time. Okay. Um, and then I'm not familiar with Instagram stories at all. So that's something I would have to look into. But as far as like live videos, um, I, I was practicing when I was active, I was practicing live videos. I was getting a little bit more comfortable with it. I felt like, but, um, I couldn't, I didn't really ever get a good feel for what is a good length of time for a live video. And then like, if I feel like I'm offering a really good value, then I feel like the video is going too long. Um, and so then I also feel like I kind of lose engagement there. It's more of me just going into lecture <laughs> rather than discussion. But yeah. So, so I always say like a five minute video is great. Like if you go to 10, that's fine. Um, but just think of like how like people's attention spans are even shorter than you think they are. Like they're very short. Um, so I also say go right into your content. Don't just sit there and be like, okay, I'm going to wait for people to pop on because the reality is like for Facebook, they're going to see the replay. They're not going to see it live. Um, so go right into it and really break things down. So I always try to break things into like three or five. So like your top tips on that subject. So people are like really looking into it and breaking it down and make sure it's organized. Like I always just write a little paper out before I go live. So I know I like I stick to it so I don't ramble because I know like I have a tendency to do that too. And I know people aren't going to watch it later. Um, so always make sure it's providing value about something. Is it like a recipe or your top tips on waking up early or your live workout, something like that. But then like really break it down into like tell them how many they're going to have. So how long they have to stay around to, you know, listen or show them the actual recipe, but make sure it's more engaging too. Like if you are just going to sit there and talk to the camera rather than do something that, you know, they know what they're getting themselves into. They know what they're looking for. Um, but once I hit, like, I'll look at my clock and once I'm at like the five minute mark, like I really try to kind of start wrapping it up. Um, cause I know that people will start to be logging off. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll throw this in there. And then if, uh, Mackenzie, you have another question. I didn't mean to interrupt, but um, Kaylee and I just went to a conference and we learned a couple of things about uh, the new Facebook algorithm on mm -hmm. the videos. They were saying 30 seconds, which I don't know who can talk in 30 seconds, but 30 mm -hmm. seconds to three minutes was a good time. And like you said, I wouldn't go over five minutes. No. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I think the shorter the better if you can get your point across that fast um but like the five minute is personally where i would be logging off at five minutes um but i can see that like three minutes or is even better yeah all right and the other thing i was going to say that we learned at that conference about the questions now this was a new one and you'll still still see a whole bunch of people do it and but facebook i think from what we were told is going to start buckling down on it but do you remember um all the posts like vote on which shoe i should wear vote on yeah yeah no, they do not like yeah. that anymore. They want more engaging questions like what brand of washing machine should I buy yeah. or whatever. So I've noticed that um, some people are still using like those types of questions, but they need to be mindful of it now because that's on the new algorithm or whatever. 
they want it to be a genuine conversation versus mm -hmm. yeah that's what i heard too it's all like genuine and like people yeah. you're really talking to and who they can tell your friends with and like it matters like who you're messaging to now i think like because that's like more of a personal so like whoever you're messaging more make sure you send them messages because then you're going to show up on their feed yeah. too and don't copy and paste messages like they can even see that so like anything genuine like you said yeah they're watching it they want it yeah to it's crazy <laughs> So, all right, well, uh, anybody, oh, well, anybody. Mackenzie, you got any more questions? I don't think I have any more questions, but thank you. Okay. All right, well, thank you, Taylor, for taking the time out of your day to get on our call. I'm excited to share it with the team. Yes, I'm excited. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. All right, I'll hush up so you can go. <laughs> See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See ya.